If you don't already own your own house or land free and clear, which I'm sure that's part of your plan at some point, well, how else are you supposed to retire and create a stable future if you never own your own property and can therefore at least fix some of your costs or eliminate them? But unfortunately, with the new global agenda for the public to own nothing and be happy, well, there's a major issue unfolding with real estate. And it's actually been unfolding since 2008. This will be an even bigger hat trick than the last crisis where everyone rushed out and bought property only to get it pulled out from underneath them a few years later. You know, the difference is we're not talking about standard crashes or recessions anymore. We're talking about an entire social and economic reset. The good news is I've been studying economics and currency life cycles for well over 50 years. So I can help people plan for this exact moment. Now, of course, this isn't the first currency reset in history. And if you understand how this process works, well, you're the one who can pull the hat trick when the time comes. First, I'll show you their plan. Then I'll show you my plan and you can choose what's best for you. Coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in that planning. And today we're going to talk about real estate because data out is showing that it's appreciating or going up in price, I mean, more substantially than since they started tracking the records. But I'm also wondering if the trend of big corporations going in and buying up real estate that started in 2008 isn't coming to conclusion now. So if you look at the median price of a home up 23% year over year, right? That makes a whole lot of sense, especially since this is supposed to be the stable part of your portfolio, but they've been working very hard on turning real estate into more of a Wall Street product and you are going to pay the price. Now, of course, as prices have been moving up, they are enticing those that have been holding out to put their properties on the markets. Of course, they're still lamenting the fact that there's not quite enough property for all of the corporations to buy up. But could this be an indication of a market top? And actually, does it really matter to the corporations if it is with all their free money and other people's money? So the result of the global central bank money creation on real estate, you know, this is not just happening here in the US. This is a global phenomenon. And you can see Sweden, Denmark, Russia, and then the US is fourth in prices going up. But is it really that value going up or is it really the value of the currency going down as global central banks debase the currencies that are already out there. Because frankly, this kind of global move is not normal price action move. So now that would definitely inspire more people to sell. Now, of course, if you're selling into this market, you're going to have to be buying also into this market or you become a renter which is really what part of their agenda is. Housing market gone berserk, do you think? Because if corporations are getting money for free or they're using other people's money, their savings, well, they're getting paid 
and you're taking all the risk. And I don't know whose benefit that really is in. Because it should be clear that they want America should become a nation of renters. Woohoo! The very features that made houses an affordable and stable investment are coming to an end. And really, again, that isn't something that's new. That's something that started in 2008. The process is painful. But it's not all bad. Slowly but surely, most Americans' single biggest asset, their home. This was a way for people to create some equity, is becoming more liquid. Call it the liquefaction of the U.S. housing market. We've been talking about this, really, for quite some time now. And um, part of what the goal is, is for you to hold your title to the house in digital form that can then be broken down. So if you have, say, a couple hundred thousand in equity, but the equity is broken down into little bite-sized pieces, dollar pieces, now you're out shopping, you see something that you want, and you, what you end up doing is spending your equity. Whose best interest is that in? And in this global economy, Mm, somebody from any walk of life in any country can own the equity in your house. But here's the piece that we really have been moving towards since 2008. Mega landlords are snapping up homes before the public can even see them. So because of the price action that's been going on, because what do these mega landlords care about? Once they have you renting from their property, can you kind of remember Potter's Field and It's a Wonderful Life? And were those people better off because they were renting in Potter's Field? Or no, because they ended up owning their property and therefore you can control your house, you can the prices, your monthly expenses, and you can even, dare I say it, pay it off. I mean, it used to be that they would have mortgage parties when mortgages were paid off. Now they've gotten that time frame of which you hold the property shorter and shorter and shorter, and now it's getting out of reach for especially first time home buyers, but for many people that may, may take advantage of this price appreciation and think, well, okay, I'll just rent for a while. And then that may just not really be an option that you're thinking that it is. And during the pandemic, look at how much the rent is costing, how much that has gone up. That's gone up like over 4%. It's pretty substantial. But don't worry, because you're gonna own nothing and you're gonna be happy. And you will pay what Wall Street demands that you pay. And what I also find really interesting in all of these prices going up, and we've been, we've been questioning this since the rent moratoriums and the mortgage moratoriums have been put in place, what happens when that whole piece begins to unwind? Well, they're trying to unwind it slowly so that it doesn't have an impact, but you know, certainly there could be a whole lot more properties that come onto the markets for the mega corporations to buy. And how easy is it for people with an eviction on their record? Uh, make it real easy to actually go out and rent something else. And how much will that be? Because the people that have needed to take advantage of the moratoriums, well, they're usually in the lower income category. The other piece that I want you to be really aware of is the gold to home price index, because historically this can tell us where we are in this trend. And we know that particularly both gold, spot gold, and also real estate, well, real estate has been targeted for reflation. So they're both tangible assets. 
and presumably they both cover inflation, except one you can own outright and it's portable, which is gold. And real estate you cannot put on your back and ta take away. So it's not just the price appreciation it, or the price inflation. Let, let's call it what it is. Not appreciation, it's inflation because of course it's been targeted for the reflation trade. But it's also the ability for states and municipalities to charge you higher taxes on the real estate. And gold has been doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing right along. And that is the amount of gold to buy the current residential real estate, your home has been dropping. And what we know is that historically on average, I can't say what it's going to look like this time because there will be a lot of real estate that is going to be coming on the market, whether it's from the mega landlords that are doing it with all sorts of debt or others that are forced to sell their primary homes because, again, the debt, you, you have debt, then you become a debt slave. And as long as your income can keep pace with that debt, not a problem. But this is part of the function of gold inside of the strategy. Because what we know is historically, on average, 25 ounces of gold will buy an entire city block buildings and all. And we can see in the charts and the graphs, wow, gold to real estate peaked in 2001, but it's going to get a whole lot better because gold has not been targeted for reflation yet. However, keep in mind that is how they reset. They do that overnight revaluation of the currency. So gold has been doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. It will continue to do it. It's going to continue to put you in a position to have the wealth transfer your way because you're actually holding its purchasing power value. So if you have not already subscribed, please turn on that bell notification, hit subscribe, turn on that bell notification so you get alerted and make sure you leave us a comment and make sure that you share, share, share. And until next we meet, keep in mind it is 100% time to cover your assets. Here at ITM Trading, we use the Wealth Shield. And you've got to have a place to make your last stand. That's your real estate. That's your property. Along with food, water, energy security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, which is what these events are all about. And my work is all about, really, and shelter. So until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.